I'm Jay Valenti. I'm a fitter and turner by trade on the Central Coast, and this is my 2008 LS Swap G Patrol. I feel like every Christmas since I was little, I was sort of always asking my mum for a dirt bike. And then I came on home one day and there was just one sitting there and I was just so stoked, I was absolutely wrapped. And it was an old bike, you know, so from there we were, you know, we were absolutely just smashing around the paddocks and whatnot, and then we'd have to bring them back and fix it because war is breaking them. That, I think that's sort of where that grew, but, you know, not coming from a family that was fully dedicated to four-wheel driving and camping, mates started getting four-wheel drives and we were working on cars in the little driveway and we had compressors at nine o'clock at night and, you know, all this noise going on and I just thought, oh, this is what I sort of like. So that's where, you know, I moved on to fitting and turning and, you know, started getting into four-wheel driving. You'd just jump in the car on a Thursday afternoon at four o'clock after work and go out to the bush and then you'd be there till three o'clock in the morning and everyone would be stressing because they've got to work tomorrow and whatnot. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'm sick of sitting in someone else's car. I want to get in my own car and start getting out there as well. So that's sort of where it all really started. So the first four-wheel drive I got was a D22 Navara. And pretty much the only real reason I got it is because it was the only car the guy would swap me for the Subaru at the time, having no money. From there, you know, we chucked a set of 33-inch tyres on it and wound the torsion bars up and made a set of shackles on the driveway. And then we started just flogging in the bush and taking it on the beach and all that sort of stuff and then moving into the touring side of things. And I had dirt bikes at the time as well, so I needed to be able to take those. So we just built a set of racks down each side. You could two swags, two blokes and a bike and a bike on the trailer and, you know, fishing rods swinging off the front and surfboards wherever you wanted them and just sort of getting out there and just doing what we could. So I bought the GU probably yeah, 18 months ago. And when I bought it, I was, I'd come from the 2.8 wagon that I was always having problems with, you know, overheating issues and whatnot. So I wanted to buy something and spend the money on something really reliable. And I couldn't justify the money on a 4.2. So I flew down to Melbourne and bought the three liter, sight unseen pretty much. Drove it back when I bought it. And it was in pretty good condition. Like, you know, the body was all straight and, and it had, you know, lift kit on it and tyres and whatnot. But from there, I sort of started using it again and just thought, oh, I was just breaking things because I was just so keen to get out in the bush. And all I was doing was a small trip. We were about two weeks off going in a Morton Island trip for a few weeks. I was trying to figure out how I'm going to set it all up. So we got a, one of the mates came around and we were just in here swinging off a welder for uh, four or five days straight building canopies and whatnot. And then we just left and just went for it. So five days out before going to Cape York for a five week trip. And I was just driving down one of, the, out of the, one of the local tracks after setting the rear up for the new canopy setups and it just was lacking power. I didn't know what was going on and it was just blowing heaps of smoke. So I took it to a mechanic and two of the injectors had actually just pretty much just exploded. So we had to get overnight injectors through and as I was doing, we were doing the job, we found out that the guy before me had snapped the timing chain and the chain had gone through the whole engine. So we've pulled the sump out and it's just full of bits and pieces and, and I'm sitting there going, oh, do I can the trip or do I just sort of keep going? So we ended up chucking the injectors in and drove around town for the next two days or whatever and it was driving awesome. I was like, yep, this is all good. We're about an hour and a half into driving up to the Cape, going through one of the big hills out there through Bulladeela and the car just went into limp mode, couldn't go over 80 k's an hour, and I was sitting there on the side of the road deciding whether I turn back or keep sort of going on. So I just decided to keep clearing the code and keep going on, and two and a half weeks later, we'd done the Cape, done the tele track, and we're on our way back, and I'd stopped into a local super cheap auto and tube of metal in a tube, and I just filled one of the injector plugs to stop it from going into limp mode, and drove around and had no real issues. Then I was sitting on a beach up there just thinking, oh, what am I gonna do with this? Like, how am I gonna fix it? And, you know, half a dozen cans later, we decided that an LS stop would be the way to go. The next night when we got reception, I'd organised the motor for when I got back. And then we just drove back and ripped it out and started to get into it. So I pretty much decided to do the LS swap because I was pretty tight on the budget just after doing a month long trip. And my cousin was actually pulling an LS1 and the full kit out of his patrol to put an LS2 in it. So that was the motor I'd organised while we were away and I was all sort of gung ho and doing it. And I hadn't done any research, so I thought I was just gonna run with that. And then my mind was set on the LS, so you know, I was watching videos of them and them throwing big roosters and all that sort of stuff and getting more and more keen. And then once I got back and started, you know, doing a bit of Googling and whatnot, I realised I couldn't put the LS1 in due to engineering. So I had to go with an LS2 and end up actually with an L98 six litre. Um, and then from there, I was trying to chase one down because I had my heart set on the LS now. So, you know, a few more weeks sort of passed and I ended up picking one up from a wreckers down in Sydney. So I still had enough going in this to drive down there, chuck it on the back and bring it back. And then from there, I was looking at all the kits and sort of what I was going to do. And I thought, I don't want to spend money on the bolting kit because 
between me and all the boys, we can pretty much do anything in the shed. So I ended up finding the kit second hand. So I got that express shipped to me as well. And then that night, you know, a couple of cases of beer and some pizzas and four or five of us just ripped the engine out and started going for it. Well, sort of the main issues is they're not a very big motor, but it's sort of getting them to sit in the right spot. So the kit that I'd chosen, you know, we were modifying firewalls and cutting engine mounts off chassis rails and stuff like that and trying to get the thing to sort of sit in there right. Then the issue was with the exhaust, so we are making, you know, custom headers into the crossover pipes and all that sort of stuff. So it's running a three-inch exhaust now with a set of custom advanced headers made for it. And then you're running custom sumps and, and whatnot. So, but, and, but before all that, you sort of, you want to make sure it's a reliable motor. So, you know, we're changing oil pumps, injectors, spark plugs, leads, everything pretty much that isn't part of the engine was changed before it went in. And then from there, you know, it's more just a time thing, all the little, little bits and pieces, you know, making sure you've got power steering, all your brakes work and all that sort of stuff. So just getting through those issues, you know, making everything legal then, you know, so you've got to have certain distances between chassis rails and gearboxes and try to make that all work in a car that wasn't meant to have that motor originally and, you know, getting speedos to work and, you know, rewiring bits and pieces was probably the hardest thing about it all. You know, just making it a turnkey car that you can jump in and do a month long trip in is probably the hardest thing to get to. You can buy the kits off the shelf, but you're paying a lot of money for them. So being able to, you know, have mates in the mechanics and being a fit and turner, you know, you can make anything you need to make and whatever, just to get it how you want it. So that's probably the best part about it. I built this car so it can handle all the tough tracks that you need to sort of throw it down to get to the destination. So my previous cars, you know, I was all about sort of going out on a Saturday night or Sunday, whatever it was, smashing the car all night on a track, bringing it home, fixing it, going all night on the tracks again. But now I've sort of got something that I want to be able to go places. And a lot of those places, you know, you've got some pretty hardcore tracks to get to them. So, you know, having a car that can, you know, do a thousand Ks, on a big trip and then hit, get a track and then do some pretty gnarly four-wheel driving tracks and then set up on a beach and you've just got all the luxuries at home and sort of why I built this thing. So future plans for this is probably going to be dialing the suspension in a little bit more now that I've changed all the weight. I'm going to be getting it tuned so I want to bring the litres per hundred down because everyone sort of knows that you know you just absolutely smash and feel in them so I don't really need all the power it's more just the reliability and the sort of cost effectiveness if the engine does blow up it's only two days in the shed you know a little bit of money to sort of change the engine out instead of you know doing injectors on a big land cruiser or whatever and then from there I'm just going to start using it so you know I've sort of planned now every second or third weekend I'll be out and about and two or three big trips a year. Next year I want to actually take probably two months off work and you know do a sort of a mini lap, go out to Uluru and do the golf up the top and do Cape York again and sort of just, just, just use it really, just get out there. Probably what appeals to me the most is just getting away, sort of, you know, you, you're just out there, you, you turn your phone off and you're just sort of just amongst it, finding all the places that no one else can really get to, so just sort of going places where, you know, you're relying on the sun for power and you just in the water every day or hitting tracks every other day and just sort of getting out there and seeing the country pretty much.